Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Today, we're uh, again, once again, with our favorite love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. This Hi, is where John. you say hello, Michelle. <laughs> I, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say hello, Hi, too, Art. to make it a trifecta. Uh, Art, you should always say hello. Forgive me, I didn't mean uh. to leave you out. <laughs> <laughs> so, today's conversation is about how to have a safer sex conversation. I'm just going to turn it over to you, Michelle, because I don't know how else to lead into it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, so so I guess I want to briefly talk about what is safer sex, right? And then basically the idea is that before you're intimate with a new partner, sexual with a new partner, considering that, it's really important, it's um, responsible to have a safer sex conversation beforehand and to reveal, you know, where you're at. And um, so to, just for both of your sake, for your own personal health and well-being, as well as your, you know, potential new partner here. And I would say that uh, a lot of people just maybe assume that their partner is, is fine and, and no problems and they're healthy and they don't have any STIs or anything. But, you know, it's not really good to make assumptions. And I think for some of our viewers here, probably, you know, if you're new to being out in the dating world after maybe a long period of time or, or not, whatever, it's important to kind of be current with that. So yeah, I'm glad we're going to touch on this today. Great. And, and you're going to include so, things like uh, 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 wearing a mask and social distancing. Uh, had a different well, conversation. that's interesting. Well, I wasn't going to, because I mean, I, I know people are getting vaccines now and obviously there there's a whole level of COVID protocol that we need to be careful of. But I was just going to be talking about when you're you know past that point, and you're getting together and you're thinking about being sexual with each other. In Great, some because way. masks so where... and vaccines and things like that are very political and we want to be apolitical. So uh, I'm glad you're just talking about sex. Okay, Art, yeah. Art, sex is not Art, political I, at all. <laughs> yeah, I, Art, I, I got lost there for a second. Was that humor? Were you being sarcastic about yeah. the masks? I, didn't oh, I send okay. you a memo about that? That, that I was yeah. going to do something humorous <laughs> about wearing masks and such. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Sorry, that went over my head. Michelle, take save us, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me dive in. Yeah. So so basically, um, you know, the, the 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 main point here is to prevent contact with any sores and prevent exchange of bo bodily fluids. So the idea of making your sex safer, of course, you know, the safest sex is probably not even to be engaging at all because obviously, you know, condoms break and things like that. But basically, we're trying to avoid blood to blood contact and trying to avoid getting bodily fluids like semen, vaginal secretions, blood, or feces inside the body um, of another person via the mouth, vagina, penis, anus, or any open cut. So you want to look for any skin breaks or sores or growths in and around the mouth or genitals and ask your partner to explain. And of course, you'd want to use a barrier like, um, you know, condoms or dental dams for vaginal, oral, or anal sex. So, and if a condom or other barrier breaks or comes off, you know, you stop, right? And of course, um, this is probably obvious, but, you know, don't you reuse condoms. You know, um, if you put one on and maybe you you're lose your erection and then you think you can put the same one back on, it's best to get a new condom because it's already been used and it might have... Uh, bodily fluids there. So the idea is that if you are going to have, um, you know, sex with a partner without these barriers, that there really needs to be a pretty high level of trust that you know each other's status, you know that you're not, they're not involved with other people, that you're not involved with other people, and you really want to be clear about that. So there are kind of two parts to it. So that's kind of the basics of the of the um, the medical part in terms of, you know, what we're trying to do here with safer sex. But I, I think there's important to have kind of a two part conversation. One of it is about, you know, really, what are we doing here together and inviting, you know, what does sex mean to you? What does this mean about you and me? Um, I realize I'm <laughs> talking to the two of you guys, but you know what I'm saying? You're basically what what are we, you know, deepening our relationship? Does that mean we're being exclusive? Does that mean you're not seeing anybody else? Like, you know, sometimes we have assumptions that that means those things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. So it's really important to know, well, actually, I just want to 
um, and enjoy being sexual with you. And I don't know where I feel about where the relationship's going, or I actually am also exploring being sexual with another partner. So, you, you know, we're using protection and, and being doing safer sex and having these conversations. So, so all this stuff is kind of important to get out on the table. And, um, and then, you know, you probably want to share, you know, what you like and don't like sexually, as well as, you know, what, are you open to doing today together? You know, like, well, today I just kind of want to maybe make out and get naked together, but I'm not interested in um, having any penetrative sex or, you know, maybe I'd want to touch your genitals. I'm not sure. And I know it's like, I feel like I want to pause here because you're probably thinking, yeah, this makes it sound so unsexy. <laughs> well, uh, talking about sex can be sexy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, yeah. But it's a very difficult thing to do. A lot of people are very uncomfortable talking about either part one or part two, either the, the you know, the medical, uh, the scientific uh, mixing fluids or right. the emotional side. Right, part two, right. the emotional side of what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Where are we going after this? You know, yeah. also, no question that our audience is, is uh, wide and varied so that. <clears throat> Uh, uh, you may just touch upon uh, some topics for one or two of them that's going to be extremely helpful. Well, most of the other people, including us, we've been both married for over 50 years, be titillated maybe a little bit uh, by it. But uh, the real value is to those people who are facing these issues. And they're serious issues. And, and you're basically saying it's okay. And not only is it okay, but you should really talk about it. And here's a way to talk about it. So. Yeah, um, right. It's it's quite important, and um, so we thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's as as I points out, it's not about age. Um, you know, we're we're the Act Two generation, so people are having sex at sixty and seventy, and Absolutely. they might be. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of jokes, bad jokes, I might add, about you know sexuality in nursing homes. Uh, so it's not about God, age. It's about, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh yeah. I'll, I'll share them with you offline. Thank you. I'm, 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 I'm making a note here. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> but but the point. My point is that um, you, you can have new relationships, sexual relationships, at at any age. And That's and absolutely. so your advice is very practical for people of all ages, not just you know we. We often, particularly the older you get, you often think, and as Art mentioned, we've been married for 50 years. So if you say a new relationship, often my mind goes to somebody dating at 20 or 30 or maybe divorced at 40. And and yet any age, uh, this is good advice. Absolutely. I mean, I have clients in their 70s who are just dating after decades of being you know, married. So you know, they're coming, they're new. And I mean, obviously this information is available out there, but it's important to not rely on your partner to just assume that, oh, they would tell me if they had an STI. And it's like, you know, hopefully right. they would, but, and, and, and it's possible, of course, they might lie when they're having these conversations, but, you know, then you can sense something like that. You know, if you actually bring it out explicitly and somebody has to lie to you directly, I think you're going to pick up more clues than if you just pretend it doesn't exist, right? It's always wiser to bring it out in the open. And so I think that, and especially around like, you know, when somebody's just getting to be dating and maybe getting intimate, a lot of people make the assumption, oh, they must just be doing this with me. And, you know, that may be true and that may not be true. And there's no wrong or right here. I'm not trying to say, oh, you can only have, be having sex with one person. That's not, you know, that's a personal choice. But if you are going to be having sex with more than one person, you know, please ask about what your partners are doing. You know, make sure you've gotten tested. So anyway, let me let me dive into the other part too, because the other part is really about the STIs. And so um, basically, you share any STIs or anything else your partner should know about your body, and share the date and results of your most recent test for STIs, as well as have you had any partners and how many have you had partners have you had since that test. And have you had any unprotected sex since your last exam? And then if contraception is an issue, if you're, you know, I know we're in the 50s and up, but, you know, you might have a younger lover. <laughs> so, you know, talk about that. What's going to happen with um, that possibility? As well as what kind of protection will you use, you know? Or maybe we will just avoid 
any penetration of any kind of sex for now until we get these tests. But for now, we're going to just be, you know, hands, you know, no open sores, check for that. And then just touch each other's bodies and enjoy that, you know, with our hands and, um, you know, pleasure each other that way. So you want to make really clear agreements around that. And, and the one thing to note, too, is that alcohol and drugs and even sexual arousal often impairs your judgment. So that's always something to, you know, people go to a bar and have some drinks and then maybe you don't take the time to find out. I mean, I see this in movies all the time and it just, anyway, what can I say? It bugs me. It's kind of like, you know, a couple gets together and then you see them in bed the next morning. I'm like, wait, do they have a sex, safe sex, com safer sex conversation? You know, it's just, that's my thing. But <laughs> um, it's really about honoring your own health and well-being as well as your partner's. And if your partner doesn't want to talk about this or doesn't honor your needs around this, you know, is this somebody you want to get intimate with? Are they going to respect your boundaries? You know, what about consent? Do we, do we want to proceed or not? Are you going to be, is no, does no mean no? You know, these are, this conversation is like information about your partner and how you're interacting with each other. And if it goes well, you learn good things about the other person. And if they're kind of like, well, I don't need to tell you that or, you know, I'm fine. I, I don't. I know I don't have any t any STIs. It's like, how does that make? How do you feel in response to that? So these are learning. We get to learn about our partner this way. Well, that was good a, advice. A really um, remarkable uh, advice and conversation. But I think uh, the most remarkable thing is that uh, in today's day and age, uh, you're explaining to our audience that it's not only okay, but it's more than okay for you to engage in these conversations. And if you don't get appropriate answers, then, you know, unless you've had a little bit too much to drink at the bar the last night, you're going to wake up in the morning and wonder why you didn't ask the question. So uh, just for a, a quick review, uh, the, the quick few things that uh, somebody should bring up with these conversations that are in today's day and world okay to have. What are the few things that they should absolutely ask about. Yeah, well, like I said, it's bis you know knowing the person's SDI history, knowing when they were last tested, knowing if they're engaging in any kind of sexual activity with anybody else, or if they have any agreements with anybody else. Maybe this person is in an open relationship and and married, and does their partner know? You know, these kinds of things would be what you want to know about. And then obviously your own status around this. Um, when you, you know, you're testing, when you were tested and then, you know, what protection would you use? And if you were going to be, you know, what kind of sex do you want to have? I feel like I'm kind of rambling. There's so many pieces to it, but basically it's finding out, you know, what does this mean around our relationship? Is this an exclusive thing or not? It's just basically not to make any assumptions and come together with, okay, what are we doing here? Uh, what would you like to be doing? I'm liking spending time with you. I'd like to get more intimate. However, I also want to have just understand a little more about, you know, your health and my health and is, you know, I want to be safe here and I, I care about you and I care about my health. And so it, it's sort of opening up the, and this could be like, it's not like you sit down and you know, go through the whole, it might be you touch on it, you know, the first time you're just dating or whatever, or first time you make out and then you might, you know, go into some of these things. So it's really, uh, you know, taking your time with it as is necessary to talk about. You don't need to talk about your STI test if you're just meeting on a first date. Who knows if you're going to even want to be sexual with each other, you know? So it's kind of like finding the timing that makes sense for your individual interaction with the, the person that you're with. Good okay, stuff. So, <laughs> like, so they're not going to send to you for a little checklist where uh, you're out on a date and you say, oh, wait a minute. And then you say, look at that and that. And that. So, so, so it's not as simple as that, but they can have, oh. engage in the conversation. Uh, just a common sense conversation. I think that's the important message of the takeaway today, that if you're in a dating situation, it doesn't matter whether you're 50, 60, or 70, or 80, okay, have the conversation. It's okay to have the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I can put a, a checklist in the uh, in the uh, comments below. How about that? Oh, OK. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube.
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.